you people and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? Well, I was gifted a Amiga 500 Plus motherboard. Thank you. But this one is very um, typical Rev4 Amiga 2000-ish and I want to show you a little bit closer up. There's Agnes. She's, uh, yeah, she's seen better days. ROM socket. Uh, really crusty. CPU socket. Got a, missing a couple teeth there. And it's crusty. All the resistors, they're white ashed. Denise, uh, toast. Surprisingly, the CIA socket looks mm, okay. And this one here looks even better. Gary, a wall, he's missing some pins. And uh, yeah, the resistor pack area. How's the battery? Well, it doesn't look like it's ate through the lines like they usually do in this corner right here. This runs up to CIAs and Gary and all that crap. Over here is really clean. It does say 500 plus revision 8A. So one megger, actually it'll be a two megger because I can one meg here and then put the other meg in here, 8375 VBB and on our way. Except I have to acquire all these parts. It has a red tipped cat. Was I here? She's a PAL unit, 28.37516 Hz of mega. And she needs about everything. So I'm going to start with a bath. And I was thinking about throwing it in the old dishwasher. Because why not? What's it going to do? Hurt something? But my wife doesn't want me doing that. So I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. And that is with her toothbrush and a bunch of alcohol and vinegar and just remove everything. We're going to take all the sockets out. And this one's going to be a special, unique one. Because in the past, um, Mr. Jack from Pints and Amiga gave me a few of those zip socket things, like the Zero Insertion Force dudes. They look like this. That way I can put chips in here and have a board to test OCS, ECS stuff on. These are too big, actually. So I think these are 44s. And uh, I'll have to kind of do some juice to use them in certain sockets. It's, it's Gary-sized. Uh, CIAs are... No, they're 40 pins, so I can do Denise, I can do Paula, maybe, and definitely Gary. So that's the game plan. That's, that's what I'm going for. I have a, a case somewhere on the archives that I could think about digging out if I can find it. I do need a keyboard. Just see what happens. That Agnes is just something, isn't it? Look at that girl. She's seen better days. Well, the whole board's seen better days. I really wanted to toss it in the dishwasher, but Mona's against it. Oh, how's the back look? Uh, pull her pants down. She looks pretty good. Look at that. We have like a translucent area right here with the, the date, which is, I don't know, 36th week of 91. So there's my numbers, 21-something GVO, but it is translucent right here. You can see the old fat finger running around there. Two hours later. Remember Agnes? Uh, she had, Well, she's missing some teeth, but still got the West Virginia look. Uh, you know, CPUs, it, all these sockets are toast, but I mean, the, the, the level of yuck is much, much less. I uh, put it in the sink upstairs and gave her a scrub with Mona's toothbrush, purple one, and uh, then rinsed it off with IPA and stuck it in front of a fan. Now, it's still got crusties. It's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. It's a workhorse. I'm going to start the long process of removing all the sockets. Figure out what the hell is going on with Gary. Looks like he was just ripped right out of there and, and holy crap I just noticed this is bridged. Okay so we got our work cut out for us and I'm not going to bore you with it but oh my god. When do they go with the pure metal RCA jacks? 555 CPU sockets out and whew, even after a while she's still crusty underneath. Not only was it goopy on the top, but it was like goopy on the bottom too, and it was like glued to the uh, surface of the board. So this is Paula, 
and uh, see how somebody already went in there and pre-filled this thing full of nasty boogered that would never work. Maybe they were planning on pulling the sockets out. It's getting better and better even though you scrubbed it. Look, acid, calcification, whatever, hard water. I don't know. Look at that. It's just, whoo, she is just uh, a little dried up there. Today's interrupter is Mona ah. picking up dog poop that I didn't clean up. <laughs> I'm gonna do Agnes next, and we'll see how crusty that one is. This is the bottom of Agnes after I washed it. So it just goes to show you, even though I got all that crunk out of there, it's coming back, it's just creeping up. It's... Oh my God, now I got a couple pins left over, cause you know, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's, that's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. There's crap flaking off on me like mad. This is the amount of lead I've extracted so far, one super crusty odd CIA. You noticing a theme here? That's the stuff that we couldn't get to underneath. Maybe this came from a drug court too. Let's take a look at Paula. And the theme continues. So I bet you that's what Gary looked like before. This had like, I don't know if it was acid core solder or just something in it, man. It's just craziness. Uh, I still gotta get Gary out. He's got all his teeth in him. And just like it was clipped with the socket which is yanked and I'm afraid of all of those little vias being bork, bork, bork. this could be a flipping nightmare we're getting lots of acidy cocaine here on the board we'll just put that on me in the floor Up seven um yeah taking a look at Gary here where I thought you know he was already pre-extracted um, there's no vias in most of these holes they're just just nothingness. Um, there is a little copper in the center. So maybe the socket will stick. I have to pin all this out. The rings are gone, so it's gonna need a lot of wires. Yay, that's 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 great. It's a 500 plus, so it's small. And there's not a lot to it. It's not like it's got a 80 million logics. 15 actual logic chips. So with some debraid and flux and Alcohol and Hooper's Hooch and Windex, we've managed to clean it up quite a lot here. Look at the shine on that girl. She's looking a lot better. Um, you know, it's far from perfect, but I've fiberglass penned and debraided and got all the crap out I can. Paul is kind of crusty in spots. Gary is really bad. He's missing half his rings all over the place. Um, the odd CIA I have not cleaned up yet, but I have removed it. I still have to remove the even and Denise, but my body's running out of power. It's 724 and it's been a long day for me, so I'm gonna try and catch up on this another day. So I'll see you guys in a second. 348 p.m. Last we left off, I ran out of energy and turned off my stuff. I did get Gary, Paula, Agnes, the ROM, and the CPU sockets removed. The sludge cleaned up with some Windex fiberglass pen scrubbing. Found out that Gary lost a lot of his pins, and that sucks. Um, odd CIA has been removed. Haven't totally cleaned that up yet. I have left Denise and an even CIA to remove. And then I'm just going to not think about the capacitors for a while. I will replace them. Maybe. We'll see. One of my Discord members and friends, Jonathan, found a ZIF socket for an Agnes. Pretty cool. Due to its dimensions, it might hit the resistors around here. We'll see how it... I'll, I'll see. It's like $65 for this socket, and if I bork it, that's that sucks. Cup of coffee in my friendly mug. Read that for a second. Sound out the words. Forms letters that form a words. 4.12 p.m. Last of the two nasties are out. Look at that. Holy Christmas! Membership in the Jelly of the Month Club. Today's interrupter is brought to us by Mr. Donald A. Got us 3.2 CD. If you're watching this, Donald, you'll be like, dang, that was a long time ago. And Mr. Jack from Pints and Amiga needed an Amiga test kit. I sent him the link to Kier Fraser's site, and he said he went down there, and none of the images that I write, can you send me the ADF, even though it's in the zip? So I replied, shaking my head, it's in the download dingus. But here you go. He said thanks. 
So with that beep out of the way for 15 or 20 seconds, let's do the other socket. Here, let's take a gander at our finished removal. So here's the niece, looking a lot better than that white cocaine odd CIA that I literally just did five seconds ago. Even CIA turned out real nice. Gary, yeah, that quarterback is toast. Paula, eh, Agnes, eh, ROM socket, pretty good. 68,000, eh. So, Gary's going to be our problem child, along with the battery area. So I'm going to have to go through him, mainly check the 48 through 40, the final 8 here, that run through the resistor packs and down past the battery. It like cuts right on the edge. I mean, whoops, it cuts right on the edge. Normally this girl barfs out. Uh, this is the negative positives. So what we're looking for is, you see these dots right here? We're going to look right here, okay? This is the resistor packs. It runs right across. This is where they bork. I do have to get that peg out of there. And also, my camera sucks the donkey. So you can see, she is literally right on that last data line. I might bork one or two that I'll have to fix. Probably one to that bottom silver dude here runs right on up the side my fingers are got flux and crap all over them but yeah i gotta try and get that peg out right there so i'm gonna use the manual mona which is my kato solder sucker i'll try to remember to put links in the description for these things and i'm gonna have to crank her up to 896 degrees that's that's fahrenheit not communist i'm gonna alcohol my hands the hooper's hooch just to get the sticky flux off Cotto solder sucker. It actually says solder sucker. I'm going to add some to this lead pile of crap just to reconstitute it into something that melts. Suck it out. Uh. Oh, didn't get that one. Got that one really good. Pulls these big diarrhea solders out. You can see that right there. Oh, well, that's gone forever. That didn't help either. This was a poker set I got. This is jacked up. It's really, it's steel. <laughs> Mesh wire. But this thing, it looks like a flat blade. It's a chisel and you could cut, you could like remove a kidney. This is so sharp. However, I try to use it like this and I don't know if this is going to work because you know, my camera sucks. My filming is epic. What I do is I put a little dab of flux on here. I'm trying to do this sideways so the camera can see. See how the flux just kind of helps me get the goop out here? And I'm just going to be careful because i got some data lines in here i got to worry about. But i got to get that green scuzz off of it. And you're thinking, oh my god, that looks horrid, Chris. Yeah, it looks horrid. It's really bad. But, and it sounds, it just sounds wonderful. Well, I'm hitting some dry spots, okay? And I would repeat this process. And then I'll just take some alcohol again, just a little bit of lube here, and just take off what I just scraped. See the Q-tip turning green. I think the flux just, just like kind of keeps it from chafing off. I guess I could use alcohol too. You know, but you can see the green and a little bit of solder mask coming off. The dark copper here where I did not scrape because it's getting close to the data lines and I actually think all my data lines might be okay. I'll fiberglass pen the area too. I'm just trying to get all the initial doo-doo off of here. You can go in there with a poker and whatever. Give her a big one. And then with the crap, the data lines that run literally right here, I'm going to fiberglass pen out. I'm left-handed so I'm going to be in the way. I'll cover all this back up. Fiberglass pen is a mild abrasive. Alright, so look at that mess. Alcohol on a cotton swab. Just gonna wipe her down. Now I didn't scrub all the way through. The idea is check these lines right here. Down to these points and up to those points. You can barely see on the top. I'm worried about one right here to this point. Right there. Well that goes to this little point. So I have to kind of... I was fiberglass and I was working on it. So that's my last... I gotta get this out. And I'm gonna take it all out up to here. 
all the way around down to these points here. I'm just going to clean them all out. It'll say nothing. It won't say bah. And then over here on this negative, this is an open spot. There's one really close right here. Got to get out. It looks okay. Um, the camera doesn't do it justice, but you can tell that it's there. And normally those are 8 the F up. And they all go up here to these resistors, pull ups and stuff that go over to Mr. Gary. Who is this Gary character? RP-105 sitting there naked, and JP-7A, and all that good stuff. It's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Well, lick my face and call me a marshmallow. Even the two boogers next to see whatever the hell this one is, was. I was worried about those two. They run up to that jumper pad JP-9 north, but look, I didn't scrape all the way up, so if you're seeing some darkness, I left that alone. I got all the goop out of this just epic looking thing. I'm going to take the center hole out of here too and retin these just to touch them up, make sure they're talking. I did find one ring break just ever so much. I had to drill this out with a micro drill. I'm going to put a piece of wire in it, fill it with solder, and then bond it. And then the whole thing will get solder masked with Sally Hansen Tam Tan Lime. Fingernail polish. What? Right here. There you go. Thinking that doesn't look filled. Right there. So that's where we came through. She's still a little bit damp. So right like that. The wire is still cut here. It would have ran over to here. I could have did it there. But looks a lot better only having that. And when it's solder mask, you're not going to see it. I also uh, tinned the balls on all the points. And I'm just going to go through and double check my beeps before I green this out. So I can zoom in to like 150% because I'm blind. Slide on over here to the battery area. And bottom post is ground, I know that. So we'll click the next one, which is blue and I hate. But I can make sure it's got all its beeps. So you, so watch pin, U11 on the bottom, pin 1. Got it there. So this is what I'm working with. I check that line, and we're going to check the next one here. Oh, it's red. That's that's great. Can't see anything there. So yeah, all those colors that don't look colorful because I make my board gray. So it's a little bit easier on the eyeballs having a monochrome-ish looking with colored dudes. Alright, enough of Amiga PCB Explorer. Thank you guys for that site. Donate if you can. PayPal, even if it's a dollar, it helps them out. Just to keep web fees down, monthlies. These things cost money, domain names, etc. I'm gonna start putting sockets back in her. There is a freaking resistor right on her butthole. Yeah, it's got a ceramic cap on the end of every one, so it's not gonna work. If I move these ceramics to the bottom, it is possible I could do this. And that would be cool, because that's the game plan for this girl. There is no 68,000 ZIF socket that I can find. Okay, so, that cap, that's like on here, see this capacitor right here? So I took this on the top, from her, put it on the bottom. Yeah, it's going to elevate a little bit, but that's not what this board is about. This board is so I can use zip sockets, so I can test everybody's stuff if I have an OCS machine. There we go, look at that. One, whoa, shit, it's heavy. One Ziff socket Denise. Wow, that's crazy. A lot of work for a little 500. One, two. Cool. We got everybody populated but Gary. Denise, Paula, CIA, CIA, 204 ROM, 8375 VBB. Yeah, they're expensive. And a 68,000 that I had. The only issue I have here with the Ziffs is Gary. Uh, so I'm going to knock this arm down. We'll just pinch it off and pull that little green nipple and put it back on the, the one over here for Denise is fine. Um, still looking for 20s for CIAs, but you know, I can, they're just turn pin sockets. I did a standard 42 pin because of the extra, uh, I didn't have turn pins in that. And I didn't want to do turn pins for a CP because I hate them. 
Good morning, it's 8.44 a.m. I just finished pinning out Gary all night. Are you stupid or something? So the one problem I ran into were the capacitors. There's some ceramics uh, there next to the IC. I just relocated all of them to the bottom. One, two, three. No big deal. That way this big monstrosity of a socket can fit in here. I ran into one problem on Denise where the arm was going to bump into Gary. So I just gave her a little bent bob there. And it's totally usable. Pop a chip out. Pop a chip in. Fold her back down. You're good. So I also marked the sockets for pin 1. And wrote a pin 1. Just in case my brain don't work or the next guy that gets this when I die can be like, what the hell is this? That is the amount of lead I pulled out of this board, by the way. That's pretty substantial, these dill pickles, so yeah. Okay, so I'm all set up for a test. I got the GBS, the Retro Friends box. I got my thingamabobber hooked up. The Agnes, um, this is a 500 plus PAL. So according to the whatever of uh, Sprint layout, it's gonna need 3180-6910. I have 3180-6911. But it does say 3180-6911 for NTSC or 3905-44-02. So I have to change a crystal or this will just green screen, right? It will just go green, red, green, red. Hit it. Nope, nope, just green. Nope, there's red. Okay. We have an Agnes error. I'll change the crystal. That's what I'm going to do. I'll just put a socket on it so I can flip it in the future if I ever get that Agnes. Good thing I took that crystal out. Look at that home slice. Yeah, that wasn't going to work anyway. The crystal is rotted out underneath. Literally rotted out and leaked into. I don't know if you can see that. This day, this project is like never ending. Emotional damn it! 5.23 p.m. I believe I found the boo-boo. There's no way in hell you're going to see it, but I'm going to try. Number one, I'm not Picasso, okay? I made a massive booger drag of solder off of a resistor. But the line next to it, there's a ceramic capacitor right where my nasty thumb is. Right here. You see that mess where it looks dark? Don't don't take your eyes on that. It's a big old turd. I just drug it. There's a rake right, th right there. It's so tiny. I filled this with solder, scraped her out, started scraping lines like, what in the hell? Right there. That's your girl. I'm going to do what I always do, and that is find a crappy capacitor. I'm going to rent its leg off just for its metal. Now, there you go. See that nasty big solder drag? It's barely hanging on there. That's a capacitor, ceramic capacitor leg. I used it for its metal, like I kind of did for this one, but it didn't reach all enough. And I drug solder a big booger right there at the tip. And yeah, so there's two lines in there. They're very close to each other. And the more I look, the more I find. I thought all those traces were good. There's micro breaks in them. There's these pepper dots of death. They're like they look like this. Hello, it's another day. 5:18 p.m. Okay, so I just spent the last hour and a half messing around with this thing. Well, I just happened to, you know, plug the RCA RGB in, and, oh my god, everything's been fine, right? Everything's checking out, I'm scraping, scratching, double checking craziness, removing diodes that I found cross-populated. You're gonna be like, how'd you miss this? I don't look for this, okay? I don't look for it. I don't know if this is it. Look at the video. Now, watch this is broken free of the plastic. I push it on, I don't, look, it's like, it's not connected. 3000 video hybrid chip. That'll work. I claim this for Spain. Hi, welcome back to Project Ziff 500. It's not working. <laughs> uh, what do we got for CPU? CPU starting to heat up, that's good. How about that RAM? How's that RAM looking? This is live view, you know, live view of the board. So that's the Chinese flair. Kind of tells you you get camera wise. I like the other one better because I don't get distracted by stuff. 
Okay, so I took some time on Sprint Layout Viewer on the Revision uh, 500 Plus board here, and I just pinned all those out, and they all check out fine. Which led me to watch some of the former footage that I had and realize that I was going to replace that 244N. I'm going to cut the legs off the chip, and what are you talking about? So, you know I cut everything, because that's kind of what I do. Because I don't want to risk separating the board, damaging the vias, or anything, what I do is I put on the helmet of Goober, and I go in here, see that? I snip its leg. I'm trying to do this one-handed and out of frame of camera. Clip, right? And when I get that done, okay, well you saw all that, there you go. So, I will pick this chip out, and holy Christmas, look, what do we find? More acid damage that got into the chip. This side, whoa, this side clipped out clean, and it's, holy God. So, see, I got, a, I got an official label now for Mr. Chris Hooper. Hooper's Hooch. So he's holding his own, ta-da, Hooper's Hooch. 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. We'll zap that, and I will get the goop out of here, and we're going to see what it looks like. That's what we pulled out. Just on one little wipe. I haven't even got the legs out yet. Now this is a slow step process for me. Some of y'all like to go in there, hot air these chips out. I just take some flux, Kester 186 in my my flavor of the woods. Just give her some hot sauce there. Heat your pin up. When it smokes that's just the flux and then pull it out. See that? Now you're going to have a solder ball left behind, and that's okay, and just fling your piece of metal somewhere on your board so you lose it. Soldering tweezers. Here you go. Soldering tweezers always stay closed, so you can just grab it onto the piece and do your thing and pull it out because they hold the part for you. They're just freed solder legs. And all I'm going to do is take some braid and, you know, flux it get it off of there so look at all that yuck yuck do any of those vias hold their junk well they were so I'm just gonna clean them up and we'll do a closer inspection so from here the via ring was broken to here so I ran a wire right here it goes over here to Agnes and that Paula pin and then the fifth pin of or sixth pin of Denise what else is messed up? And is her sister underneath damaged too? So this is U12, U10's next door, and then we got two more, 11 and 13 underneath. They're 373s, so they're just... This was literally right next to the battery. That whole area goes kaploof. Oh, it's 4.34 p.m. If I look like death, that's because I worked a 34-hour shift, and I was on a two hours of sleep the night before, because I was an idiot and stayed up working on Amigas. And then we had a power outage, useless information at work that went past our battery length time of our infrastructure unit, which caused a whole bunch of mess. So that was the whole day today. So I left early, took a nap in my office for a couple hours. It felt okay enough. Tonight my body shuts down since it's Friday night for mandatory Chris updates where my body just shuts off for 14 hours and I get sleep for one day a week. And then we're back to it. I replaced this 244 buffer, that is U12, U10 is her sister, brother. It is white and ashy underneath also. Oh good, I have the, I have the actual Fairchild exact chip of these other ones. This chip is all ate up to acidically. I have kind of touched it here and there, but I haven't really gone through it. All this is just death right here. Gross. Chip number two with acid damage. Hello from another day. So, I got this 373 I just cut out. Death, look at that. That's what's underneath of that. You can see all the eight up traces that I scraped free. Now, if I turn it over the correct way, you'll see where we're at in the 500 pluses. Battery bar for right here, line scraped. And just like that, through the magic of editing, McDonald's chicken nuggets, the power of gray skull, we got a socket in. I found another broken line underneath. Did these chips die a death? No. Should I have removed them? I believe I should have, just to get the crusty acid underneath, because if I would have left that, what would happen? Yes, could I have gotten it to work? Poss if the chips were good, possibly. 
But what's going to happen is that acid's going to continue to work its magic. And over the years, maybe not in a year, maybe not in two, but maybe later on, it could have happened any time. It would eat through again, and then you're in the same boat wondering, man, this thing had sockets on it, and it's still all jacked up. What happened? Which leads me to believe, is there this crust under every single chip? Because every single chip I took off so far has looked like death. We'll give this thing a deep bath. I'll pull all the chips out and we'll give her a good clean. Clean. Burnt. I don't know if it's bad, but you know. Okay, so I just snipped her out. Let's look at the instant results of, oh my goodness. Can you see the, look, it looks like, like mold almost. Oh God. That thing had nine lives, she just spent them all. And I was worried that one didn't have anything underneath of it. Joyous occasion. This pin's gone, that's luckily non-connect. This is VCC and this one broke the ring on both sides, fiberglass pendant. There's a little line of acid crust that probably infected all of them. Broke the ring there, broke the ring at the top. It's just wonderful. It's just a blessing. Yeah, I bet you could use a cool one, huh? Now you're talking. Hello from 1.48 p.m. Remember when it was just like 8 o'clock a couple minutes ago? Well, let me show you something. Here's a document that I've been doing on the delay lines and DRD and uh, all the buffers and flip-flops and transceivers. She's starting to look like spaghetti on the bottom. Because as you can see, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. Some of them are really tiny. Yeah, I'm not Picasso and this isn't perfect. I'm not worried about how it looks on the bottom because we don't look at the bottom. We'll Ten to go. And it just takes forever. Mental health break time. I'm gonna hook this up and we're gonna test it. Here we go. Oh, yes! Diagram! Yes! Yes! <laughs> All right. One mega chip, because I don't have the belly in. She's 8375. 68,000. Good gugga mugga. Two megs, so it'll start borking out. Shadow Ram will kick in after a meg because I don't have the the this thing. This is only a 512er. There we go. So 1024 and it's gonna start borking out, which is fine because remember, two meg Agnes. This is the old diagram, okay? This is a PAL unit. So she's jumping in PAL, and she should just get all okays. I haven't even finished testing those lines. I should go through them, but since it's working, I probably won't. We're gonna go to the newer diagram. Off one, two, one this is. I have to learn the hieroglyphics of these V position. I know what they mean, but I don't know what these values are for good, bad, or ugly. It's just, that's the Hertel hieroglyphics. Most important thing is, is it works. Oh my God. Will it boot a kickstart run? Yes, guys. The Ziff 500 is fixed. I have, can't find the belly slot stuff. I can't find it anywhere to get my two megs of chip around. Or at least 1.5. I had it. Projects. Here it is. Little box I have called parts for projects. Let's see if it's in there. Let me get stuff to do. Not it. Not those projects. Those are 3,000 projects. I have a CPU relocator here. That shoves this up here, but because of my ZIF sockets, I don't know if I can use that either. It's possible I can. Let's see what happens. So, I don't know if that's going to work because this cap is just huh, too high. Let's see if I can squish it over there. And my crystal's in the way. Well, that is some ghetto stuff. It would fit, but the crystal's just too high. Let's see if I can let's see if I can cut a couple reliefs off her pins here. This crystal's in a socket, so now it's flush. Let's see what we get. This cap is 
not sitting right. Eh. Close enough, that's down. Now we'll put this contraption on here like this. What a mess that is. Ah, God. Yeah, what happens? <laughs> Let's see. 6830, 64 megs. One mega chip. So that's that's even better. Yeah. Speed is it I think it's 50 or 51. 51.8, give her the cold shower pull. 1.94 better than a 3030. Look at that, because of the RAM. Uh, B2000, so 12.88 times faster than its self. No FPU on this model. Let's put a 3.1 on it. Well, it's the expansion board. Yeah, it sees DH0 now. Boot. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I think it's 314 on here. Now this compact flash card is also extremely old. Today's interrupter is brought to us by Mr. Jonathan, who found a keyboard for this thing. Incredible. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that so much. And a thumbs up. This is still going, and it's slower than dirt, so I'm not gonna mess with it, but it works. Oh, was it finally going? I saw a screen change. Oh my God, look at that. It took four Ever. Magic Copper, you need AGA to run, and Magic Workbench should load, and that is horrible. But it works. That's crazy. Mewkit sensors, gods, NTSC. Yeah, this isn't going to work. 64 megs of RAM, 1 mega chip. There is my preferences. Holy Christmas. Okay, so that, that functions and it, it looks okay, and the Frankenstein concoction works. So the first test of hardware on this extreme craziness here is functional. Yay. I'm going back to 68,000. All right, so with that, I'm going back to the way it was. I think it was Kickstart 1.3. You know what I'm going to do? The first test of this machine is to ZIF check a couple of, I need ZIFs for C, P, uh, CIAs. I have CIAs here. I'm gonna check those ROMs that got deathly hot. Why not? So we know 204 works. One point two. Wow, okay, so I gotta label this sucker. Nobody plays with that ROM at all. Last step, I put a battery in and I got these. Lithium ion rechargeable, 3.6 volts, rechargeable 2032s. Cool. They're from Pi Cell. <laughs> Don't know anything about them. Just ordered them. Do we have continuity now? Yes, we do. Voltage. 4.35 is our charging voltage. There we go. It's wiggly loose. Turn it on. Do it to make a test kit. Set the clock. Let's do 2000. Do 14. We'll do a couple seconds. Save and exit. Okay. Turn this off. If this clock works and this battery thing is charged, charging, let me check the voltage on it while it's kind of going down here. 395 and holding. Turn it back on. Not that I need a clock for anything, but if it has it, might as well fix it. October 30th, 8.14.05 and ticking. Sweet. And these were $14. Why do you go with a 2032 cell, Chris? Because they're like really cheap. Compared to $14 for five batteries. Yeah. Special order e booger. Okay, so the socket's out. Sorry for the fan noise. It's pretty hot in here today. Yep. <laughs> there went Denise. So I had to bend the arm of Denise removal up to kind of get it up into the 
area here so it didn't bump directly into the side of this plastic. I'm going to have to move the cap to the bottom and these two ceramics EMI filter caps E262 and 631. We're just going to flip them to the bottom, keep them in the same orientation, just reversed. So I'm going to pull those out. The diode looks like it might make it. It's just right here because of the socket. Um, the keyboard pin might. Hey, those components have now been moved to the bottom. So as you can see, I have a clean slate to start working on. On the bottom, there's the capacitor and there's those two. Let's reassemble our Amiga, which will be a little weird. I think I don't have to bend that thing. That will work. Perfect. Okay, so we're good. I don't need two ZIF sockets. I can easily have a working and test a CIA. Cool. And I don't have to replace things. Tonight's interrupter is brought to us by Mr. Q, who's having problems with his Mark III. 6th of November, 2014. This has been off for a while. 2014, 6th of November. Yes, I have a 314 boing ball, a 3.2 boing ball on there, and I have to take the trash out. 3.94. And holding. And it's self-charging because the Amiga charges it. Turning this back on and letting it boot. And let's find out what Kevin's issues are tonight on the old YouTube. Oh, we got a paragraph. He's having issues with his Mark III daughter cards and stuff. Okay, anyway, back to the lecture at hand. Perception is perfection, so we'll let him understand from a young G's perspective. <laughs> Ooh. Welcome back to another day, but today this puppy came in from Amiga Kit. So we're going to open it up, and I think Matthew sent me purple. This is the 1 meg expansion or 512K. For the uh, A500, 500 plus, it'll work in either one. Has a little provision for an RTC clock module, but the 500 plus has one in there. I've removed the battery for just a second, and uh, we're going to turn this off. So 1.5 megs of RAM, you can see we're working good. To install this module, it is a simple removal of this. We'll put this back in the anti Static mofo. I do have my prison bracelet on by the way. Uh, and this plugs into the belly slot. Same as the other one. Make sure your pins are all lined up. And plug that in like that. And there you go. And it is as simple as turning it on and hoping nothing blows up. Let's see. Something stinks. It smells like... That thing smells. Why does it smell? It smells like burnt electronics. That ain't good. Memory. Two megs. I don't know why it stinks. It smells really bad. Let's turn it off. It smells like burning electronics. Maybe it was some flux residue. On here. Yeah, there's some flux residue. You want to clean your flux because some flux can act conductive at times. You can see there's a lot of flux on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and squirt it down with some Hooper Hooch, Mona's toothbrush, just to break that flux up. Now it doesn't remove it. You're just smearing liquid flux again around just to break it off those pins. This is a soft bristle toothbrush. You could scrub for a hundred years on this and it wouldn't do it. Then rinse it off really nicely one more time. Kimtech Science Wipe non uh, uh, doesn't dust whatever it's whatever that word is I'm looking for. Easier to dry something out. Energize again. RTC, I have to reset the date, but memory, 2 megs of chip RAM, yay! Okay, battery is back clicked in, we'll go back to the clock here. Uh, clock, 746, 747, and 747 just flipped. Awesome! So that is 
Project Ziff 500 available now to test your chips. Cool. Something that I know works and everything works and if it doesn't I can flip it out. I only did one CIA because there's no reason to Ziff socket two CIAs. Plus it's a lot of work relocating the components to the bottom and bending bars and this CIA was a hell of a lot easier than this because of the two capacitors and the op amp and just stuff. So now we have a board that I can use to test chips on. Should I recap it? Yeah, but I don't feel like it and it works. So if it ever becomes an issue, I will. So that is it for Project Ziff 500 Plus. Coming soon to videos in the future to test OCS ECS chips for you. Thanks for hanging out with an old fat dude for the day. And as always, until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. from funny, you bastard.